everyone! Today I am doing a requested video. One of my followers asked that I show my sub plans. I've mentioned before that I really don't like to leave my le lesson plan book sitting on my desk when I'm having a sub come in because Oh my god, I've had my plan book just get ruined. There's been hot coffee, cans of pop. One time, I am not making this up, I came back after a two day absence when I was sick and there was barbecue sauce smeared all over my plan book. It was like the sub had literally wiped their face using my lesson plans. It was, it was disgusting. So I have a completely separate binder I use for sub plans. I have a form that I've made, a real quick form that I use if I'm having, having a planned absence. Sometimes when you're a teacher you know you're going to be absent because you have a doctor's appointment the next day or your children have a doctor's appointment. Something's going on so you can take time and set those plans up real nice, but then there's that time where it's 2 o'clock in the morning and one of your children suddenly wakes up with stomach flu and you are now up all night with a very sick child who has projectiles coming out of both ends and you are not going to be at work the next day. Those are your unplanned for sub emergencies and that I have a whole special tub set up for. So I'm going to turn this camera around and show you the different strategies I've learned over the years to help make life a lot easier for a substitute teacher coming into my classroom. So this is a folder that I keep in my desk drawer and it says ready to go sub plans and these are the forms I use for a planned absence. Because I don't want to have to write it up all over every single time, the basic form on the front page is very simple. Um, it lists the specials that I have Monday through Friday, so this way this form is universal for any day of the week. The next part goes down to you know morning routines, organizing attendance, taking having the breakfast in the classroom. And then here I have my daily five block. And for a sub, all I've done is take out the focus lessons. Um, if, you, if you're familiar with Daily Five, you know there's like a 10 minute focus lesson and then read to self. Then there's a 10 minute focus lesson and then my kids have choice. Then there's another 10 minute, 15 minute focus lesson and then my students do their independent writing. So for a sub, I have simply taken out the focus lessons and I will have them read a book to the whole class to start it off and then they just go through the motions of Daily Five even without me here and the children once they learn the routine they almost don't even need a sub to be in the classroom for this part they know what to do so all the sub then has to do is while the children are working independently for this giant block of time he just has to walk up and down the room and make sure everyone's focused and on task then the next part says lunch this part of the form is blank because this is the part that will change depending on you know what's going on in the classroom and I like to have these printed ready to go so I just have a few blank lines so in just a couple of minutes I can jot down my math lesson that I want the sub to do whatever English work I want done and I tend to give subs social studies not science um, you know social studies it's easier for a sub you, you read the book you talk about it and maybe there's a worksheet or if I'm really lucky I have some scholastic newspapers or um, Michigan monthlies, Michigan weekly newspapers and I can just leave that for the sub and it's very easy for them, it's user friendly. Science tends to be more challenging for subs to do. Finally, uh, there's a read aloud and I make sure to leave a stack of books on the desk and the end of the day procedures. So, like I said, I have a bunch of these forms ready. I just have to make a couple of quick notes and leave this on top of the stack of work that I want the sub to do and that's all there is to it for my sub plans. So that's the one for a planned absence and I will stick that back in my drawer. This binder, it literally says stop emergency plans only if there are sub plans on the desk, please do those. And then this is my substitute binder and inside is notes from the subs so that they can communicate with me and I will know what went on the next day. The first page says essential information about our day and all of our routines, procedures, lunch times, anything they may need to know to help this day function is in here. Because one thing if you know about students when you're a teacher, especially if you're a sub, the first thing that children will do is tell you that's not how Mrs. Beitler does it and I know if you're a sub that's very infuriating. So this is to help the sub do it like I do. Then inside I have a full page explanation of what is read to self, an explanation of what is read to someone, 
And then some story mapping ideas if I'm having them do work during the Daily Five. Most times I really don't. Here are some writing prompts that they can do. And just a variety of work in here. So, sub binder. And then the next thing over here that I'm going to move over is my actual sub tub. Let me zoom out here. This, I keep the binder right here in the front and reading and just tons of really good quality reading work. Yes, it's ditto sheets, subs like ditto sheets, but I've worked really hard to make sure I found quality ditto sheets. Um, a lot of these are Common Core aligned, so even though the kids may be doing a worksheet, at least they are just still meeting a, a standard in the Common Core. Here is the language arts section, and the sub can pick any paper they want. Moving on to writing, I have a wide variety of writing prompts and stationery that will keep the kids busy for several days. Math papers here. And a lot of these worksheets I have bought from TeachersPayTeachers.com. And I have the links for these worksheets. So I will be sure to link the person on TeachersPayTeachers.com who actually created these. So if you think this is something you want to look into, this is all fourth grade work. And then as I was saying, for social studies, I have Scholastic News. And I made like the matching worksheets that go with the Scholastic News. Here's another one. And then I keep a good selection of longer storybooks. Um, these are not books that the sub's going to read in two minutes and the kids will be done. These books actually take a little time to read the entire story, which is good because let's be honest, for a substitute teacher, a big part of their day is really just kind of spent trying to kill time and make it to the dismissal. So I tried to give them as much help as I can by providing really good work, easy work, step-by-step -step directions, and everything is in one tub called the sub tub, which I store on the floor under my desk. And I make sure that the children know where the sub tub is. Because even though I will leave a note saying, you know, sub tubs on the floor under my desk, I am shocked at how many subs I've had over the years come in and not find the sub tub. So, and then they'll leave a note for the principal that I left no work for them to do and they had a horrible day. And it's like, wait a minute, there's an entire basket full of work. So make sure one or two of your children in your classroom, your more responsible ones, know exactly where to find the sub tub. This way, there's no excuses, the work is there, and everything should be good to go, and the subs should have a really great day. So that's everything. I hope this was helpful for you. If you like what you saw, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more from me, be sure to click the subscribe button, and I'll talk to you later.